this is probably going to be the most mind-blowing, life-changing five minutes of your accounting life. Okay? Get ready. So uh, and I, I, I don't think I'm overselling it either. <laughs> so let's say, for example, I downloaded some transactions from a credit card. So I'm going to pull up uh, transactions from a credit card here. And as I mentioned earlier, we, we have the option to do uh, the show bank details, right? That shows the full kind of the full information that comes from the bank. It contains, in some cases, the store number if you're working with a franchise or a multi store a multinational uh, company that would basically have additional numbers identifying it. You also will have additional information such as, you know, a, a, a restaurant that used the square uh, point of sale system. Uh, so you're going to see uh, gas stations that will have the gas station location number. So there's a lot of extra data per se in the original bank data that comes from the bank. Now, I personally, in most circumstances, I would suggest to always work with um, original bank details. Like almost never, I would switch to not using bank details. But there's one exception to the rule, which is using the original bank details in order to import your vendor list, especially to a new QuickBooks Online file in order to really, really speed up the data entry process. So let's, let's do an example of what I mean by that. So for example, we have this um, uh, vendor called ASP South. That's the original uh, uh, data that comes from the bank. If I click on uh, don't show bank details, QuickBooks will clean it up as ASP South in the display, but it still shows the original bank memo as ASP South Inc. We, whichever route we go, okay, we would definitely have to create the vendor. So if I type ASP South when I'm creating the, the vendor itself, I have to literally type that, hit tab, and then click on save. So it's actually a couple of steps. It's not a big, huge deal, but it does take a couple of steps to do. Not a huge fan of how long that takes, but you, you have to do it anyway. So let me go ahead and put this into Office Supplies, and then let me hit save it, and let me show you uh, the second option you can have. So let's say, for example, we have Barnes & Nobles here. So I'll click in here, and instead of, well, this one recognized it. So let's pick maybe... This one here called Blue Taco Tequila, okay? So let's say, for example, instead of typing it, what I can do is I can go into my memo, which is one of the reasons why, again, copy uh, bank detail to memo is so powerful. Again, copy bank detail to memo. I'm the biggest fan of that feature for obvious reasons. I can come in here. I can right-click copy, go into vendor, right-click paste, then click on tab, and then click on save. Okay, so that saved me a step. I have no issues with um, with this so far, I think, let me put this into the meals uh, category. We'll create that expense real quick. So that's a little bit better than typing it. We clicked, on, we, we copied and pasted. So let me go ahead and click on add. Now I'm gonna show you um, what I think is probably the ultimate technique, which is copying, not copying and pasting, but exporting what we're seeing on the screen and importing it into QuickBooks in order to build our vendor list. So I'm gonna come in here where it says ex export. It's a tiny little icon next to the gear menu. There's basically a little export is in between the printer and the gear, and that will open uh, essentially an Excel file. When you open that Excel file, let me drag it here to the right. We open an Excel file. It basically, it downloads a preview of what you're seeing on the screen, okay? Uh, generally speaking, I don't need to see the date and I don't need to see the category or the amounts, all I'm seeing in this case is I'm seeing the stuff that QuickBooks has already recognized. So basically you get an Excel copy of what you're seeing on the screen at the moment. So what we can do is we can take a look at the ones that have already been recognized and leave those alone because I don't want to duplicate any vendors and the ones that haven't been recognized because I don't want to sit there and create each vendor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire spreadsheet and I'm going to zoom this in a little bit more so you can see everything we're doing. I'm gonna take those two columns and then I'm gonna do a filter. So I'm gonna go into the data tab, data in the top, this is, an, this is Excel, and I'm gonna click on filter, and then I'm gonna sort these by payee. So I'm gonna click here on sort by payee. That way I, I can now see all the ones that have already been recognized. These are probably accurate. QuickBooks does the recognition, 
based on past transactions or based on rules, and then focus on this group here. So all this group here of the ones that have not been recognized. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all those, uh, uh, let's call it the cleaned up vendors or the, the cleaned up version of the vendors. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, create a new tab and paste it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste, okay? And then uh, that I have a new sort of QuickBooks suggested potential vendor list. I'm going to take that entire vendor list. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And then I'm going to remove the duplicates. Okay, that way I don't have any duplicates. Click on OK. And now I have potentially 97 new vendors I can import into QuickBooks. Generally, I will go through it, make sure they make sense. If I see any of them that seem pretty much uh, uh, duplicates or redundant. So this could be a good example. You got Mr. Delivery, uh, one with a space and one without. Hey, it's not a perfect system. So what I'll do is I'll just delete one of them because I don't need to bring two vendors in there. And I got this uh, chiropractor, so I can delete uh, one of them. So basically, I'm just doing a quick over overlook, clean up, make sure none of this stuff, it's completely makes zero sense. Uh, so I'm going to go through it here. Maybe some of them, if I don't understand them at all, if it, they make absolutely no sense, just delete them and then you can deal with that um, uh, individually. So let's say, for example, this one called BT Fund Run Come. I have no idea what that is. It's, I, I don't want to bring that into my vendor list. I'll just delete it. So I guess, in other words, you, you don't have to bring in whatever QuickBooks gives you. You can pick and choose what you don't want to see. So let's say, for example, I'm uh, this one called Event. Right? That doesn't mean anything either. So I'll delete that. And I think for the most part, they all look like, like legit vendors, right? So then I, what I can do is I can take this list, I can save it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this into my desktop somewhere. And I'm going to call it uh, vendor list. Okay, so I'm just going to save a CSV file or an Excel file into my desktop using the exported cleaned up vendor data from QuickBooks, not the original bank data. Of course, you have the option to do the same thing, to uncheck uh, or, or have the bank detail checked and export that instead. So you have the option to bring in the raw data and then clean that up. There'll be a lot more cleanup, but in, in certain cases, it's better to have full raw data instead of cleaned up data. I will leave it up to you in, ter in terms of what do you think it's more uh, valuable, right? So now what I can do is I can get out of banking real quick. And again, this is the part where I said that you will be mind blown and your life will forever change uh, when you do uh, bank feeds, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go into my vendor tab. So I'm going to click on expenses and then vendors. And then you're going to click on where it says new vendor on the top right. Click on the drop down menu and click on import vendors. So I'm going to click on import vendors and then I'm going to click on browse. Okay. And then I'm going to click on vendor list and then click on open. And it's important to keep in mind that this concept works for really any digital way you make payments. So if you use apps uh, like Expensify or maybe you download your uh, expense list straight from the bank or straight from American Express, or maybe you're using companies like Divi to manage your expenses and you, you can export what you see on the screen into an Excel. Long story short, if you have the ability to get a list of vendors from the transactions and put them into Excel, you can do this trick, clean it up and import it. And then the beautiful part is, I'm going to go ahead and import it. The beautiful part is what happens next. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the mapping click on next and then click on import and QuickBooks just literally imported 71 vendors for me. So what's the value of this? When I go back into banking, um, we, I'm going to go back into banking here. My vendor list, it's already created. Now you will notice that a lot more transactions have been automatically matched, right? It's not perfect. Some transactions are still blank, but notice that the great majority of them, if you're seeing them on the screen now, the great majority of them have already been matched because we have a vendor that matches and QuickBooks says, okay, that makes sense. If your vendor in QuickBooks is identical to our version of the desk of, of the vendor, uh, maybe we'll match it to that. Now you still have to choose the categories. That's a different step in the whole uh, bank feeds process, uh, but that's the stuff that comes in. Now, if you, if you import a vendor that's a duplicate per se, okay, um, it, it's, it's not gonna be an issue. QuickBooks will just give you an error and say, hey, you can't import this duplicate and it will not import duplicates. It will not duplicate vendors. If you got two vendors with similar names, that could be a duplicate, but that's more of a 
redundancy than a duplicate. Now, notice that the one of them that was called Fun Run, I didn't know what it was. I went ahead and skipped it. So I still have the original one there without a vendor next to it. So now that gives me maybe more context for me to do my research. I can maybe copy and paste the domain name that happens to be there. In some cases, um, you will see a phone number and you can Google that. I can look at it and say, well, maybe after looking at the website, I know what it is. Maybe I don't. Maybe I can do a little bit more uh, uh, research and decide from there. And then I can decide, okay, you know what? Yeah, that is a, it's a charity called Fun Run. And then I can then make my decision of how I want to create my vendor and create my uh, categories or whatever, and then go from there. So you don't necessarily have to uh, bring the entire vendor list in. You can basically pick and choose what you want to bring in and then only maybe create uh, the vendors on the fly for the ones as I'm doing now for the ones that didn't come in. But that, that literally cut my work by 20% or by, or by, uh, or by 10% or something like that. So, I mean, like I literally cut out 80% of my work, which is sitting there and creating the vendors. Creating the vendors takes a lot longer than choosing uh, categories. And I don't want to get too much into how bank feeds work because we have other webinars that focus on bank feeds. As a matter of fact, if you're watching live today, we have one at 1 p.m. Eastern focus only on bank feeds when it comes to classifying and stuff. But once your vendors are chosen, then you can literally just click on uh, sort by payee and then you can grab uh, a whole bunch of, uh, of the same payee at the same time. Click on batch actions, modify, and you can just categorize them all in one shot, right? I don't have to no longer spend time choosing the payee, that payee was already selected. And then once you got the payees in there, I mean, everything else from that point becomes uh, a breeze.